welcome to the DC today. We have closed out Tuesday, November 29th. We now have one day left in the month of November. And then, of course, we enter the final month of the year uh, on Thursday. Uh, it'll be December the 1st, and then we'll be in the real home stretch. Today uh, kind of seems, I guess, like a pretty boring day in markets. At the end of the day, the Dow closed basically flat. It was up. 0.01%, three points. So yeah, I mean, a dead flat day. And at one point it was down, let's see, I believe the, uh, down as much as 200 and up as much as 80. And so you had a 280 point swing, not not a ton compared to, you know, the, the real volatile days. Um, the S&P was down si uh, 16 basis points on the day and the NASDAQ was down 59 basis points. So that goes along with our worst performing sector today was technology, which was down 1%, some continued pressure on some of the big cap fang type names. The best performing sector was real estate, which I believe was the worst performing sector yesterday, and it was up a whopping 1.71%. And then energy was up 1.28%. Uh, oil was up 1.8% on the day, closing close to 70 nine dollars a barrel so you you had a kind of you know high dispersion of results among sectors today actually um the 10-year bond yield was up five basis points uh to 3.75 percent so still um you know quite a bit lower than we have seen but nevertheless uh up a tiny bit today in the bond yield um i want to make a point about what i think is the consensus view as to what was the cause of yesterday's volatility and uh, I'm fine with that consensus conclusion that the uh, protests throughout China and the tension around uh, stricter lockdown policies, some of which were getting downright militaristic and totalitarian. Imagine that um, somehow militarism and totalitarianism being involved with locking down a society. But nevertheless, the um, issue of market volatility around China, I guess I want to offer a little perspective. I don't think that it doesn't matter what's going on with the supply chain side. I think it does matter. I think that the delay in China joining so much of the rest of the world in, in reopening and normalization because of the heavy role China plays as a global exporter of goods has inherently caused um, higher price inflation than we otherwise would have. And um, put downward pressure on economic productivity when you have a vital part of the, your supply chain not working or offline, it's going to have that um, knock on effect. And it's marginal now. It isn't as holistic as it was, let's say, in 2020. But nevertheless, there is a reduction of output capacity as a result of what is going on within China. And so you say, well, you know, is the market, should the market be going down 475 points on a Monday based on the uh, tensions of what are going on right now between Chinese leadership on lockdowns, uh, a zero COVID policy and their population, you know, protesting against it? And my answer is, I don't think it should. Um, I don't think, I mean, the market's going to do what it's going to do day by day. The real answer actually should be, that we shouldn't care, but that's that's a way of saying kind of the same thing. Effectively, um, here's what I will tell you: Chinese uh, the Chinese economy is going to reopen. Uh, it will, and the time period, which is already far longer than it ever should have been, I think that seems indisputable. The White House seems to agree. I think anyone who listens to me knows what I think about the efficacy of these lockdowns, what the general scientific consensus has been for some time about the futility um, and delayment, the delaying of the of the inevitable in, in these types of things. So so I'm not going to sit here and relitigate COVID policy. My point is, when it comes to the market, we're trying to evaluate what exactly to expect with uh, Chinese reopening. And what I would say is whether it is tomorrow or next month or three months, you pick, it's going to reopen. And therefore, if the markets 
have some sort of discount priced in around the fact that there is not full capacity from the world's largest exporter of goods, then you would think there'd be some upside. And if there is some trepidation as to how long it's going to be, you would think that whenever it gets resolved, whether it's in one day or, or several months, that that represents an upside issue. Along the way, I think it's got to be more noise. I can't imagine uh, that for any investors, it, whether China reopens tomorrow or in, in a few weeks or months, it, it makes that big of a difference. And yet, um, I think the ultimate kind of terminal spot where China says like, oh, yeah, science. Um, and and by the way, their own opportunity cost to be, you know, fully participating in world uh, economic affairs. I think this is this is kind of an inevitability. So I want to throw that out there. Um, I think this railroad strike is going to end up being averted. It, it's not totally clear to me that that's a done deal. I always, as a kind of public policy guy, um, perk up a little bit uh, when I hear somebody like a Bernie Sanders and somebody like a Marco Rubio saying the same thing. It generally means that there's some kind of an issue that is going to block something. And uh, that's the case here. The White House has said they want to force through legislatively an ending to the potential railroad strikes where there are four out of the 12 railroad unions that are not cooperating with the compromise that was reached between labor leaders and the White House a, a number of months ago. Um, and now you have someone on the far left like Bernie Sanders and someone on the right like Marco Rubio both saying, well, no, I mean, I we don't think the government should oversee uh, uh, kind of, you know, override the the union workers and their demands here so regardless of whether there's politics involved um even the biden administration you know is very hesitant to kind of do this but i think they're looking at the political risk of alienating some labor some union workers against the larger risk of what could happen in the economy if there is a railroad shutdown um, so I would anticipate that the strike is averted, but there's some political or collateral damage out there going on, and we'll we'll keep an eye on it till it's done. Um, the dollar status remains very, very important to markets. It's something we're watching each and every day, and I just wanted to throw out there. I think a good portion, uh, I'm going to have a whole segment on what this means in 2023, in the annual white paper that I always do, where I'm recapping the year that was and forecasting the year ahead. And I just uh, really believe that the U.S. dollar uh, represents a big part of what the story for risk assets will be going into next year. All right, I'll get ready to wrap it up. In housing today, the Case-Shiller Index, which is a composite of, of home values in 20 cities. So it's not nationwide. And you can imagine the 20 cities are generally a little larger. So People could think it doesn't necessarily correlate great with suburbia, um, but nevertheless, it was prices were down 1.2% on the month, and that represents three months in a row, where they're now down 13% since August. So pretty much exactly what we forecast at the beginning of the year and throughout the year of a slowdown in volume first, then leading to a slowdown in prices as actual um, executed trades of housing take place. By the way, the FHFA, um, the Federal Housing Finance Authority that sets the limits for Fannie and Freddie loans at what the conforming level would be. Um, they Look, I recognize a lot of our clients are not necessarily looking at conforming loan limits. Either they're not using loans or they use other uh, you know, non-bank lending facilities or or um, their uh, jumbo size mortgage. But look, there are an awful lot of people in the country, far, far more who do than don't, who utilize the conforming loan limit. And they raised the low level to $726,000 today, at which you have Fannie and Freddie involvement, which is, of course, a quasi-government subsidy. So uh, and, you know, at, at something in the range of 70 to 80 percent loan to value, you can infer that that means the that that level is applying to basically million dollar homes. And this is the low level. So you say, well, what about more expensive areas? I mean, you know, David, you live in Newport Beach and 
and Manhattan and so forth. Well, those counties of higher prices have already been at million dollar loan limits of Fannie and Freddie. The 726 applies to the, the, like, the whole country. That's the low level. And then it tears up based on county pricing from there. So uh, we've come a long way. If those of you remember when the conforming loan limits were at $437,500 for a very long time. Uh, the G jobs data comes Friday. Um, Jay Powell is giving a speech tomorrow, Wednesday at Brookings Institute. I got to think there will be some uh, volatility and trading not so ness around that. Uh, my Dividend Cafe uh, on Friday will be about the Fed. And then finally, uh, just before I the market closed and I came to record, the USA beat Iran in World Cup soccer by um, a, a thrilling score of one to zero. And so because I talk so much about uh, football and basketball, both sports and then various teams that I care about, uh, I felt I owed it to those of you who are big um, soccer fans to note that the U.S. will now advance after two ties. I think one of which was 0-0 and one of which was 1-1. And now they won one nothing. So if you've watched all three games of the USA and the World Cup, um, you, you've seen something like a three to two score total between three games put together. So fun stuff. Okay, I'll quit making fun of soccer now. Um, and of course, I am happy that the USA beat Iran for a lot of reasons. If you have any questions, email them to questions at the Bonson Group .com. We uh, do have a question in today's DC Today uh, where someone was curious about a potential parallel between the Fed and FTX, this uh, crypto scandal firm going on right now. And I kind of clarify a few things that might be worth your read. I'll leave it there. Reach out. Thanks so much for listening to the DC Today. <music>